What's up guys, this is Denadon here and I'm bringing you a Kerbal Space Program video demonstrating a little bug or flaw that I found with the aerodynamics in the default game that could be quite entertaining when you can abuse the physics. So we're going to go to the space plane hangar here and then what you can see here is a little rover I built. All it is is a simple the lightweight probe, a rover body, a solar panel, a parachute for backup, to some linear RCS ports at the back, some gear, and then some small control surfaces around each side. Now it doesn't look like much, but this little thing, thanks to the bug in the aerodynamics, can do over 600 meters a second when you fly it right. So let's just launch this and then we'll see how we go. Now as you can see, it's pretty small. It's like barely takes up any amount of runway compared to most other designs. Now, whilst this can fly, as it is by default, I like to enable infinite RCS just to make it more fun. So what you do is you bring up the debug menu, which is Alt F12, and then you check infinite RCS. What this does it means, as its name implies, it gives you infinite RCS fuel. As you can see, I already set the tanks to have little monopropellant in them, so this should make things a little easier to get off the ground. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to activate SAS and RCS, and then all we've got to do is find the right RCS key to get the linear ports firing, and there we go. Now, this does take off a little slowly, but once we get up to some speed, as you can see, it just easily lifts into the air. So we're going to retract the gear here, make things a little easier for ourselves, and now we've got the one of the most tiny, strange looking flying probes that you can think of. Now this isn't much on its own. I mean you can build tinier stuff than this. What makes this funny though is that you can abuse the physics to make things work in your favor. The way control services work in Kerbal Space Program is that when they're activated they added a certain amount of force to the actual object. Now the way that you can abuse this is by continuing to hold force then as you watch your velocity it will gradually increase over time now if you look at this all I'm doing is pulling up hard and you can see that I'm gaining some speed by doing nothing but just turning now this is the same bug that leads to the infinity glider glitch only it's perhaps more enjoyable in that regard than this but this design as you can see can sort of manage it but it's a little heavy really it can get somewhere but it doesn't really get too far before it starts to hit a wall so what you gotta do is you gotta make it even lighter so we'll go back to the space plane hangar and then we'll show you what you can do alright so here is a modified design that I made of the previous aircraft you can see I've lightened it further, I've added only a single RCS tank which I'm going to modify and lower the monopropellant, the same as the others. You can see I've got two solar panels on this one but I've completely done away with the, some of the additional weight. I've also added larger control surfaces to the sides to give a bit more force to hopefully get more of the bug, abusing more of the bug and added more RCS on the back. As you may also notice, I've added a ton of RCS ports beneath. Now this is really just to help you get off the ground and to make things easier to land. I was actually trying to build a VTOL out of this when I started, but I thought this was funny enough to mess around with on its own, so I'll see how we go. So well, let's launch this, and then we'll see where we go from there. Alright, so we're on the runway. Same practice as before. Make sure that infinite RCS is turned on just because that keeps the weight down. Now with this one there are two ports. We've got the vertical and we've got the horizontal ones. Generally what I find the best practice to do with this is to get some forward momentum going first. Like see that's you can get off the ground with this but it is a little unstable vertically. So what you want to do is you want to get some forward momentum and then when you're going about 20-30 miles an hour meters a second pardon me then you press the vertical key to basically jump yourself into the air and now with that 
Now you can see we took off in a fairly short distance and already we're going faster than the previous design was able to do. This is thanks to having the excess RCS ports, of course. So we're going to build some speed up here. We're going to slowly build around. You can see the interesting shock, shock effect on the airframe as the turbulence bumps it. I found that this becomes a bit of an issue in controlling it, especially if you turn off the SAS. So now what we're doing is we're turning hard and you can see, look at the speed pick up. Yes, we're going down, so we're going to pick that up. Ooh, just saved it there. But we're going to pick up our speed, we're going to pick up some altitude a bit, and then we're going to do the same thing again. You can see this thing is much less unstable compared to the, or much less stable rather, than the previous design. Now that's because the center of mass on this design is slightly behind the center of lift which is an absolute no-go for most aircraft designs. However, in this, you can sort of get away with it because of the fact that we've got the little RCS underneath to sort of save you. So now, as you can see, I'm just flip this just flips around like a maniac, and whilst you can try as best as we like, it's actually really hard to just point in one direction and go that way. So just try and get control here, it's not happening. And as you can see, we're still somehow flying. So I'm going to try and recover this, but I think we're not going to get anywhere with that. So yeah, it looks like we're falling to the water. At least the advantage of this design is that we have no crew. There's no Kerbals dying in this result. So let's try that again. We'll go revert to launch. And now we'll try this out using the same practice as before, only we'll try not to lose control this time. So we'll throttle up, we'll get some speed up, and then we'll do the same jump technique to get into the air, fold away the gear, and we're airborne. Just. Now we want to get a little bit of speed again. We don't want too much speed that we flip out of control, but we want enough that we can actually get some control of this airframe to try and find where this glitch is. Now you can see the issue with this one is definitely its balance, but if we enable find controls we get a little bit more control over it as the name would imply. As you can see now we're just casually cruising around we're maintaining much better pitch authority than we were before you can see all the RCS jets firing there as the SAS tries to keep us stable. And you can see that I'm not firing forward at all now. The horizontal RCS isn't firing at all except for when the SAS commands it. And yet in this turn that I'm doing, we are picking up speed. Now, the trick is to get that speed but maintain stability at the same time. This is actually rather hard to do because then you do that and then all sorts of craziness happens. So again, I think we've lost this one. We're gonna put down the gear in the hope of saving it, but no, nah, didn't work. Oh well, we'll just have to try that again. All right, so here I've modified the design slightly. I've filled the RCS tank again to try and push some of that mass forwards to maintain control. This does, however, make the airframe a little heavier, so it may be a little harder to actually get into the air. You can see we're still able to do vertical, but it's a lot more sluggish than it was before. So what we'll do is we'll gather some speed, and then we'll do the vertical takeoff, and then we'll see if we can actually maintain control of it this time. So slightly faster takeoff than before, but that's alright. As long as we get into the air, that's all that matters. Now we're going to pitch up, get some altitude again, watch our speed, make sure it slowly increases or maintains steady. We don't want to be getting too slow here. And then once we've got some altitude, just wait until we get at least above 500 meters, then we're going to start turning over again, and then we're going to see how we go. So this design should, in theory, be a lot more stable because its center of mass is equal to or slightly behind the center of lift. You can see it doesn't particularly want to flip out as the previous one did, 
but if we hold the pitch up, watch our speed rapidly increasing. This is abusing the physics, as I mentioned, and you can pick up some rather ridiculous velocities by doing this. Of course, the only issue is that if you do it too low, you'll run out of air, and then you'll hit the ground before you can really get into the more entertaining levels of speed. So, climbing up much higher here, then pitching over, and then doing the same thing again. Now you can watch as our speed picks up. See, we can flip it around still quite easily, because this design is still not the most stable, even with this power. So, we're going to try and flip it around, recover it, but now it doesn't seem it wants to go again. But we almost had it, so we're going to reset this revert flight back to launch and we're going to try again alright so now we're going again we'll see how we fare this time now obviously this wouldn't be possible to do if you're using an aerodynamics mod like Faram Aerospace because the way those alter the game means that this particular bug is no longer there in the base game you can still sort of achieve it but you'll also get massive stall warnings and your craft might not be able to get off the ground. Something like this, I believe, in Farum wouldn't work as the control services do not generate as much lift as they do in the stock game. Of course, the way that lift works in the stock game is rather flawed, but that's a different matter. Alright, so getting some speed up again, thrusting with the RCS to get some height, and then pitching over and then we're going to try it again this time trying not to flip it around and just a bit of a spin there it's alright we still need to pick up some more speed because we're descending a bit and there we go we're climbing again almost vertical you can actually climb vertical in this thing but I wouldn't really recommend it now we're going to try again See, as soon as we pitch over, we start going faster than we were before. See, no thrust at all now, and yet as soon as I make a pitch movement with the controls, our speed starts to increase. Now, the only difficulty with this, of course, is that whilst you pitched over, you're not maintaining altitude unless you actually put yourself on a slight inclination, as I'm doing here. And you can see I'm actually climbing generally whilst I'm doing this and also picking up more and more speed as I do so. So what you've got to do is you've got to do a bit of multitasking to watch your altitude, try and keep your vertical speed even or at least making sure that you're climbing more than you're descending and then you've got to continue putting the control inputs to keep your speed rising without actually getting it in the way and stalling or flipping out your craft as I've done before. Now this design is capable of getting up to six up to an over 600 meters a second which I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do with this particular version of the craft but we can certainly see how we go. You see 300 there, 300, 400 and we've lost it. So a bit of shock heating effects but we hit the ground. So, 365 meters a second was our final. So, let's go back to the space plane hangar and try that previous design again, which was a bit more stable than this one. Now, this design is more balanced than the previous one, so although it's got less power, it should be easier to control through most of its flight. This is the one without the vertical RCS, so this one you have to do a horizontal takeoff. So again, pick up speed, pitch up slowly, retract the gear, and just continue climbing slowly. I think I actually prefer this design a little more. The other one was more from just mucking around, but this one actually seemed to generally work better. The fact that the center of lift is behind the center of mass on this one made it a lot easier to fly and also having a parachute so you can recover, recover the aircraft if you get into the inevitable accident. Because that's what Kerbal Space Program is about. It's having accidents but having fun. So we're pitching over here and there we go. See this one is a lot easier to get into a stable turn. However it doesn't either pick up quite as much speed as the other design does. 
So we'll just fly around here for a second. You can see this lovely space center there. And we're just flying around and we'll eventually reach the point where we start to be picking up extra velocity. But yeah, there we go. Using the RCS, you can see we can gradually pick up more speed than we otherwise could before. It's not a lot of speed, but it is enough generally to keep ourselves balanced. And if you watch throughout the speed regime, we're picking up speed and then although it's falling off, we're then gaining it back and a little bit extra on top each time. So if you had patience and a lot of time, you could possibly use this to launch something if you wanted to that was lightweight, like you could stick something atop of this design and fly it. But anyway, let's just get this in towards a landing. Now, I'm not going to bother with an actual landing on this. I'm just going to use the parachute, which deploys nicely there. And you can see it's fairly balanced, actually, even with the parachute deployed. Whoops, we don't want the brakes there. Put the gear down. And then we want to pitch it up slightly. The RCS can help us keep it balanced. And you can see we're coming in quite slowly. So if we just wait for a bit or time accelerate, in this case, ALT, and then the time acceleration keys to bring us forwards into physical time acceleration. We bring ourselves further down towards the ground. Now, I deployed the parachute a bit high there. I normally deploy it as a last ditch attempt right down towards the ground. But you can see what we mean. Now, we come in for a landing here. Use the RCS to pitch the nose up so that we don't smash it into the ground because I'd preferably like to reuse this again. I mean, the Kerbals have probably spent a decent amount of money on this little silly probe. But yet, yeah, there we go. Brakes are parked on next to the runway. And for now, I'll just sign off with here. If I, make, if I do manage to get on video a proper sign of it breaking the sound barrier, I'll show that. But until then, have fun with Kerbal Space Program. Safe landings. So whilst I wasn't able to actually make this craft do the particular performance I was after, I was however able to demonstrate some of the strange flying characteristics that it actually has. This is simply because of the result, again, in the same reason that the aerodynamics in Kerbal Space Program aren't quite as good as they should be. So as you can see here, I was originally going to do another test to try and get this speed, but then I decided that because I was already low enough, I would just see how this thing handles. I mean, you can look, you can just tell by looking at it that it shouldn't really be able to fly. It's not a lifting body and it doesn't have, it doesn't quite have the flight surfaces it should have to be able to fly. But here we go, so dipping down, diving around, you can see how nimble this is. And the fact that it, because of the same bug I was talking about earlier, it is able to do this infinitely without giving any thrust. So as you can see, do a bit of a loop here, some low passes over the beautiful modelling of the new Kerbal Space Centre. And this also gives you a chance to have a look around, really. And as I say, it actually turns... Ooh, very close there. It actually turns out that this is a very good aircraft for exploring the area. It's easy to control. Like you can see, this one I haven't spun out, I haven't flipped it. And yet it's able to fly around with relative ease and something that I'm not risking the life of a Kerbal in. Now here we go, coming in for a landing, just returning back to the center of the space center. I was aiming to land next to the statue, but I missed it right there. So fly past it, and then I just said, screw it, I'm landing. So here we go, slowing down, and stopped. So as before, remember, enjoy Kerbal Space Program, safe landings.